Good day. So this is Mr. Stolle. Uh, uh, this is our, the second lesson on um, trigonometry, grade 11. Now, first of all, I want to, you to understand this. I think I've mentioned in the, uh, in the previous lecture about uh, special angles. Now, so special angles, these are the angles that we have, that we know the values, actual values of them. We already know the, 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 the value of, uh, of what, the numerical value of what is it, of them. Like if you say tan theta, uh, sine theta, we already know. So normally angles that, are, that will be given to you, like question that will be given to you saying, uh, without using a calculator, you must know that you have to apply special acute angles special acute angle. So these are acute angles. And now from this triangle, we have the knowledge from uh, what we the knowledge from uh, Pythagoras theorem and also uh, what called the sine, sine, cosine, and uh, the what call and the uh, what called and, and tan, how it is related on to the what to the to the right angle triangle. Now we see that when we look at this angle, this angle, this side becomes the opposite and this one is our opportunist. So we've got uh, this one becomes adjacent to this angle, which is 30. And when you look at Schisti, <clears throat> this side here becomes uh, opposite and this one adjacent and hypotenuse remains. So hypotenuse always remains hypotenuse. That's the, the longest side. So you can just say A, B, C, A, B, C. Now, what do we have here? If we say tan, Schisti. Now, tan schist, we know that it's equal to opposite over adjacent. Opposite over adjacent. Now, what is our opposite? Our opposite root 3. So, root 3 over 1. So, it's going to be root 3 over 1, and it's just root 3 there. So, it's just equal to root 3. Now, what about sine schist? Now, this is sine schist, we're saying it's adjacent over hypotenuse. So, it's going to be uh, adjacent over hypotenuse, which is going to give us 1 over 2. Without wasting much of your time here, let me uh, what call, check with uh, this angle here to and so that you can understand what I'm talking about, that the adjacent and opposite side, they are not fixed. They do change according to the angle that you're dealing with. Now here, if we say sine 30, now sine 30 here, oh, did I say sine 30? It's opposite. Sorry, 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 sorry. I was supposed to say cos, let me just write, let me just change here. Cos is the one that is adjacent over hypotenuse. Sorry about that. Cos is the one that is uh, adjacent over hypotenuse. Now, what about sine 30? Sine 30, we see that sine 30, here we are looking at 30 and 30. What is our opposite side? This is opposite, it's because opposite over hypotenuse. And what is our opposite? Our opposite is one. And what is our hypotenuse is two. So you find that cos t and sine 30, they are actually equal. Now, then we move on to the 45, the angle of 45. This angle of 45, we, are, we know that we've got one, uh, one here and then root two here uh, from the Pythagoras theorem that says, uh, what is it? Hypotenuse squared is equals to adjacent, uh, what you call adjacent squared plus opposite squared. Okay, now that formula we can get a lot there. Then sine the, sine theta we know that is opposite over. Uh, uh, sorry, sine sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. Cos theta is equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Uh, tan theta tan schist, tan theta is equals opposite over adjacent. Like here, if we say cos Schisti. Now, cos schist here, we know it remains adjacent over hypotenuse, but what is our adjacent this time? When you're looking at cos, cos schist, cos 30, sorry. Cos 30, what is our adjacent this time? It's root 3. So it's going to be root 3 over 2. That's our answer there. So that's how we get as our answer there. Now, now, now let's understand each other here. We need to understand this, uh, what you call the, this, uh, what you call how angles are, what you call how, how angles behave here. So let's say we have got theta here. This is zero angle, okay? Then we have got 90. Then we have got 90 degrees. Then we have got 180. Then we have got 270. Then we've got three skis 
So these are more like intervals that we have, main intervals that we have, like we have got from 0, 90, 180, intervals of 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, okay? So if you say 90 times 4, you get 3 skist. So here is what, we, that's what we have there. Now, then we want to know if we have theta, theta that is acute. So it's a small angle, it's theta here. And when we have theta, what is the angle that is equal to theta in the second quadrant? How do we get it? We call this, I think I mentioned it, that this is the first quadrant. This is the second quadrant. This is the third quadrant. This is the fourth quadrant. And O here, O, meaning to say they are O positive. What, what, what is all here is sine being positive, sine theta positive, cos theta, and what tan theta. What about here in the second quadrant? Only sine is positive. So only sine is uh, what called positive. So sine theta is positive. Here only tan is positive, tan theta positive. Then here is only cos theta that is positive. So that's what we must know. So we must know that it's all student take coffee. All students take coffee. Now, so once we know this, we know that whatever angle that we look at here, that is between 90 and 180, if we punch cos that angle, let's say, for example, 120. So if we say cos 120, we're going to get negative. We're going to get negative uh, values. Like here, we say sine 120, we get a positive. Then we say cos 120, we get a negative. But now, we have got angles that are here, that is that are equivalent to theta. How do we get the angle that is equivalent to theta in this, in this quadrant? We get it by saying 180 minus theta. So 180 minus theta is how we get the angle that is equal to theta there in the acute angle. Then what about in the third quadrant? How do we get the angle that is equal to theta? We're saying it's 180 plus theta. Now, 180 plus theta, what about the angle that is in the fourth quadrant? How, uh, what is it that is equal to theta? We get it by saying 3 skist minus theta. Okay, so that's what we have there. Now, from this now information that we have, let's try to check here if we understand. Now, let's say the angle that we are, we are having here, that we're dealing with here, the smaller angle that we're dealing with here is 30 degrees. And we know that if we say 30, what is the angle that is equivalent to 30 in the second quadrant? We're going to say 180 minus 30, we get 150. Now, what about in the third quadrant? How do we get it? We say 180. So here it's 180 minus 30, which is going to give us that. Then here is 180 plus 30, which is going to give us 210. Now, what about in the third quadrant? In the, in the fourth quadrant, we say 3 60 minus 30, we get 330. Now, let's like, try to understand, it. is it correct that what we're getting here? Let's say we, we deal, let's deal with the cos. Let's start with, let's deal with the cos. It's going to be easy for us here. Let's say cos theta. Cos theta, so that you can see that these angles are equal. Cos 30, we get root 3 over 2. So cos 30 is going to be equal to root 3 over 2. What about cos 150? Cos... 150, we get negative root 3 over 2, negative root 3 over 2. Can you see that root 3 over 2 is still the same, but only because where we're getting negative here, because cos is negative in the second quadrant. What about here? What do we do? We say cos 210. What do we get to cos 210? Cos 210 is negative again, negative root 3 over 2, same value as we are getting here. Now, what about the angle that is the fourth quadrant? It's cos 330. What is angle cos 330? Cos 330. Here, it should be positive. So it gives us positive 3 over 2. That's what we have. So you find that these, ang these uh, angles, they are actually equal. So how do we get the angle in the second quadrant? 180 minus theta in the third quadrant. 180 plus theta in the fourth quadrant. 
3 is t minus theta. Now, let's check here. There is what we call Coco uh, rule. Okay, I uh, just a funny name, but now <coughs> what does it say? It says sine 90 minus theta. It's one of the reduction, uh, one to the one of uh, formulas you need, uh, like especially when you're dealing with the reduction uh, uh, question that needs reduction formulas. Now, sine 90 minus theta is equal to cos theta. Sine 90 minus cos 90 minus theta is equal to sine theta. Now, this is what you call coconut uh, cocoa rule. But now, let's understand what does it mean? It means that if we say cos 90 minus 70, we get. This is equal to sine 70. What is 90, 90 minus 70 is cos 20. So what it means, it means that cos 20 is equals to sine 70. Now, if we are to punch here to say cos 20, what do we get? 0 comma 936, 0 comma 9396. What about sine 70, sine 70? What do we get? We still get the same answer. Can you see that? 0, 0,9396. That's what we're talking about there. I hope now you understand the, this cocoa. So you must always understand. Sometimes they're given cos, uh, what you call uh, 20, 27, and there's another sign 63. You must know that those things are equal. Okay. Now let's move on here. Let's try to, to understand here what I'm talking about here. What I'm talking about here. Then we have, we need to simplify. We don't need to use a calculator here sine 135 over cos 1315 plus tan 150 cos 330. Now, what do we know here? Okay, we're gonna solve it here, this side. Now, what are we going to do here? We know that 135, it lies in the second quadrant. Now, when it lies in the second quadrant, what does it tell us now? When it lies in the second quadrant, it means that we're going to say 180 minus 135. To find the acute angle, what do we get? We get 45. So we know that this is sine, 45 okay over what about 315 how, how do you get 315 we know that it's in the fourth quadrant how do we know the acute angle we say 3 minus 315 we get what 45 so we've got cos 45 plus now what is tan what are 150 150 lies in the what in the, the second quadrant we know that is equal to what 30 so we say that 10 30. Now, what about the angle is 330? 330 again is 330, so it's cos 30. That's what we have there. And now when we have this, what do we know from our values? We know that from this triangle here, from the triangle that we have here, sine 45, sine 45 and cos 45, they are equal because we've got one in one here sine 45 and, and cos 45 they are equal so this is more like we are going to get one here because since cos 45 is going sine 45 it's going to give us one then plus what about tan 30 tan 30 what is tan 30 here if we say tan 30 tan 30 is goes opposite over adjacent opposite over adjacent what is it one over root three so it's more like root three over uh, three so it's one root to three you have to resolve it over three what about what about cos 30 cos 30 cos 30 we know that cos 30 is equals to root three over two so we're gonna say root three over two what, what do we get there we cancel this one will give us one plus root three times root three is give us three over three times two is give us six now, when we have that one plus three over six is more like one plus half because here is going to give us two here. One plus a half is going to give us uh, three over two. That becomes our answer. Now, what about this one here that we have here? We have got sine 250 and cos one skiste. Now, what do we do? We're going to say 250 is in the third quadrant. How do we get the end of that is in the third quadrant? We're going to say 250 minus 180. What do we get? We get 70. So it's going to be sine 70. What about cost one skiste? One skiste is in the third quadrant. So in the first, second quadrant, 180 minus 180, 180, 180 minus uh, one skiste, we get 20. So it's going to be cost 
20. But what do we know? Cos 20 and sin 70, they are equal. So it gives us one. That's what we have here. So this is the thing that you, you must, uh, how you must think. That's how you must think, especially when you're solving uh, questions. Now, let's check here reduction formula that we're going to deal with here. Now, with this reduction formula with 90, ma, uh, 90 minus, so let's start, start with this 90. So you find that the 90 minus, minus theta, we already deal with it. We know now what it is, 90 minus theta. We said 90 minus theta, if we're dealing with the, uh, what is it? Uh, right now, ninety. So we know that sine ninety minus theta is in the second in the quadrant here. Ninety minus theta. Now, with ninety minus theta, what do we know now? We know that sine ninety minus theta is equals to cos theta. What about uh, cos 90 minus theta? Cos 90 minus theta is equals to sine theta. Simple as that. We did, did just did that, the coconut rule. Now, what about what about uh, 180? 180, when I didn't 180, 180, remember here we spoke about this, 180, 180, let's we have 180 minus theta here in this quadrant. No, we start with 90 plus theta. 90 plus theta, but with 90, 90 plus theta now, what do we know about 90 plus theta? We know that if we say cos 90 plus theta, what do we get? We get negative sine theta because cos is negative here. What about sine 90 plus theta? What do we get? We get positive cos theta. That's what we that's what you must know. Okay. Now, what about when you're dealing with uh, 180 minus theta? 180 minus theta. 180 minus theta, we already spoke about it. That is equal to theta. But here, just for you to know, cos 180 minus theta is gonna be equal to negative cos theta. Because remember, this 180 minus theta is equal to the acute angle, which is theta in this quadrant here. What about here? What about um, uh, sine 180 minus theta, we know that it's going to give us positive sine theta because sine theta is positive. What about tan 180 minus theta? What do we get? We get a, a negative tan theta because tan is negative in that quadrant. Now, let's move on and see, remember 90. Remember 180 and 270 and 360 always. Now, what about now? Let's check with uh, what is in here is 180 plus theta. 180 plus theta. Now, 180 plus theta in, in here, we find that your, <coughs> your sign is what? Your sign is, is, is negative here. Yeah? and your cos is negative here, only tan is positive. Only tan is positive. Now, what do we know? We know that we know this, how we're gonna get this. This is just gonna give us negative, what, whatever it is, if it is tan, if it is tan, if it is cos, if it is sine, sine this 180 plus theta, we know we're gonna get tan, is gonna give us tan theta, but what about cos? Cos is going to give us negative cos theta because cos is negative. What about sine? It's going to give us again negative sine theta. That's what we're talking about there. So the theta that we're talking about is we are referring to the acute angle theta that we always talk about. In this case, it's acute. Acute less than 90. Now let's move on to the next uh, next phase here. This in this in this uh, in this uh, quadrant now we know of three system minus theta. Three system minus theta minus theta. We already understood this. We already understood this. We already understood this. Cos, tan, sine, and what do we have here? We're gonna get positive cos theta. We're gonna get negative tan theta. We're gonna get ne negative uh, uh, sine 
a negative sign uh, uh, theta. Okay, but also what about negative theta? What about negative theta? When we are talking of negative theta, negative theta, we are coming back now. We are going anti-clockwise. So negative theta, what about negative theta? What, what do we, how do we deal with negative theta here? We know that if it is sine, if it is cos, and if it is tan, now sine negative theta is gonna give us negative sine theta. What about sine, what about cos? Cos, because it's, it's cos is positive in this fourth quadrant, is gonna give us cos theta, positive of it. What about tan? Tan is negative in the, third, the fourth quadrant, is gonna give us negative tan theta. That's what you must know. When I do, when I doing negative theta, negative theta, negative, if you say tan, tan uh, negative 30, we know that we're gonna get a negative. So if we say here, tan uh, negative 30, we go, know that we're gonna get a negative, but still we're, we're still getting the, the root three over three for, for 30. What about cos negative 30? We, we get what? What do we get? We get positive because it's it's a positive in here. What about, let's deal with, um, uh, what is it? Where we are saying three skiste plus theta. Three skiste plus theta, we are now in this quadrant. We are now in this quadrant. In this quadrant now, they are all positive. So here, three skiste, because three skiste, we're adding theta here, plus theta, these all positive. They are all positive because we are starting a new revolution now to start again to come back again that's what we're talking about here okay okay so now what do we also have here we also have theta minus theta minus three skist now theta minus three skist now theta minus three skist we are going to get it negative here yeah. when we get a negative value Remember, like for example, here we have maybe let's say 30 minus 3 skist. We get negative 330. Now, when you say sign negative 330, we will get a positive. Why are we getting a positive? Because here is in the fourth quadrant, it's in the fourth quadrant, and the sign is negative. When it's negative already for 330, times the negative that we are already having here, it will give us a positive. That's what we're talking about here. So here, all of them, whether it's tan, whether it's cos, whether it's a sign, we will get a positive value. So all of them, all of them, they are positive. So whatever angle that is here, so if you say 20 minus 3 is 60, we get negative 340. If you say tan, negative 340, cos, negative 340, sine, negative 340, that's one you can send. Negative 340, we are getting by saying 20 minus 3 skis. That's what we're talking about here. Now, when we punch here, cos negative 340, we get a positive. Then we say sine negative 330, three, sorry, 340. We get a positive. Then you say tan negative 340. We also get a positive. That's what we're talking about here. So these are the uh, uh, what's called reduction formulas that you must master. You must understand them. You must understand them very well. Now, let's move on to some questions that requires you to use uh, this skill. Now, for example, here we are looking at tan 210. We are asked to simplify. No calculator is required here. Tan 210, two, how do you get to tan 210? Sine 240, 170. Now, what did they teach you? You look here, you have your triangle here, zero, 90, not the triangle, cut this in plane, 180, 270, 3, skis Now, what do we do? What do we know now? We know that 210, 210, where's 210? 210 is in the third quadrant. How do we get that angle? We say 210, the acute angle, 210 minus 180. We get 30. So actually we are, we are told here is tan 30. You are simplifying it now. Simplifying to special, back, going back to special angles. We can't just give you special angles to play with. You need to use them. Now here, what about 240? 240 is also in the third quadrant. How do we get the angle in the third quadrant? We say 180 plus that theta, but now we don't have that theta. We must say 240 minus 180. What do we get? We get skisti. So it's sine skisti. Now, what about, um, 
one uh, sign 120 one, 170 170 where is it is in the third in the in the second quadrant how do you get the end in the second quadrant we say 180 minus 170 what do we get we get 10 so we are told here is sign 10. now sign 10 what do we do from there we underline now what about course 135 135 where is it it's in the second quadrant how do you get the angle in the second quadrant 180 minus 135 we want an acute angle it's gonna be course 45. what about uh, what about Sine sixty, sorry, two twenty five, two twenty five in the third quadrant. What do we do? What two twenty five minus one eighty? What do we get? We get forty five. So it's gonna be sine forty five. Now, what about cos ten, cos hundred, hundred? How do we get the angle in the second quadrant? What are we going to do here? We are going to say one eighty minus hundred. What do we get? We get 80. Now, when we get 80 here, we say cos 80. Now, from that cos 80, what do we do now? What do we do from the cos 80? Now, we check here, tan 30, tan 30, we come here and we know that tan 30 from our triangle here, from our triangle here, and you must master this, you must know this. Tan 30, tan 30 is gonna be equals to opposite over adjacent opposite over adjacent which is going to be root 3 over 3 1 over root 3 we resolve it root 3 over 3 root 3 over 3 we put it in bracket you must always remember that what about sine schisty now sine schisty here sine schisty we say sine schisty is equal to opposite over hypotenuse root 3 over 2 root 3 over 2 we and we we put that now what about sine 10 we leave sine 10 like that but now before we go further Remember the cocoa rule, sine 10 and cos 80, they are the same because when you say 90 minus, minus, uh, minus 10, you get 80. So remember these two are equal, so you can cancel them. You can cancel them. 80, minus, 80 plus 10, you get 90. Now, remember the cocoa rule, 90 minus theta is equals to, cos 90 minus theta is equals to sine theta. Now, we underline that now here what about cos 45 cos 45 remember those two are equal what is cos 45 cos 45 is equal to uh, in this case let's look at this one here is equal to adjacent over uh, hypotenuse which is going to be one over root two which is root two over o, over two but here we are saying they are equal so it's going to be root two over two we square it or so that you can understand root two over two because they are equal Okay, now from this now, we know that what are we going to get here? We can punch everything in the calculator if you want. We can punch everything in the calculator. But root 3 and root 3 is going to give us, uh, you can punch it in the calculator. Okay, now I want you to understand the importance of brackets here. You put a bracket, so start with, you put the bracket here, then you put again, you, you know that it's root 3, then over, over 3, Okay, sorry. Root to three. Okay, now what do we do? We close it. Then we open another one. We put our our fraction there. Root to three. Root to three over two. We close. Then we go. We go underneath. We are going to say what? We root to two. Root to two over two. We put that we square that what do we get we get one so what we get here our answer will be equal to one okay but now before i go further i need to remind you something here the identities that are very much important identities here which are tan theta is equals to sine theta over cos theta you must and you must know this then also sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is going to give us one so it means that sine squared theta is equals to one minus cos squared theta so these are and also cos squared theta is equals to one minus sine squared theta but these are identities that you must master you must use them especially when you are dealing with proving uh what called uh, identities 
and everything. You must use this, this where you see tan, please express it as sign of a course so that you don't have a problem. Now, let's hear a question, another question here. It's saying, given that tan 20 is equal to T without using a calculator, express in terms of T. Now, in this case here, we know what to do. We will deal with a sketch. We don't need to stress here. We deal with a sketch. You come here, you draw a sketch. Don't stress. You draw a sketch. Your sketch, what does your sketch tell you? You know that what is given to me, let me make this one 20. You can make any angle 20 there. This one is 90. Then what is our T? Our T, it means that tan T, when it's tan 20, it means that it's tan 20 is equals to T over one. Because when you say over one, it's more like there's nothing there. So it's over one. So what do we have opposite over adjacent? What is our opposite? It's T. What is our adjacent? It's one. So what do we do? Remember, we're say, going to say our x, let's just put it as x, x squared is going to be equals to t squared plus 1 squared. Then x is going to be equals to root of t squared plus 1. So that's what we have here. So we have the magnitude of this now, root t squared plus 1. That's what we have now. So once we have all the sides, because we are doing this triangle to get all the sides. Now we are going to look at tan 200, but what is tan 200 to us? Tan 200, where is 200 lying in the, in, in the third quadrant? What do we do to get the and then the third quadrant? We say uh, tan 200, 200 minus 180. What do we get? We get 20. So we know that they are equal, these guys. So tan 200 is gonna be equals to tan 20, which is going to be equals to T. So we are done with the first one. Okay, now let's move on again to 70. But what is 70 to us? What do we know about 70? We know that when we say tan 70, tan 70 is equals to what? Tan 70, this angle here, this angle here, remember this angle here, we say 90 minus theta, because remember, interior angles of a triangle is 180. So we're going to say 90 minus 20, we've got 70. So this one is actually 70. Tan 70 is opposite over hypotenuse. Oh, sorry, but opposite of adjacent. So B tan 70 is equals to opposite over adjacent. What is our opposite to 70? One over T. We get our answer. We move on. Now, what about C? Cos 20. We want cos 20. We look here. Cos 20. What is cos 20? Cos 20 is going to be equals to adjacent over hypotenuse. What is our adjacent in this case? Our adjacent is one. What is our hypotenuse? It's root t squared plus one. Then what about, let's move on again, but here you must learn to resolve such question. You can't write like this. You must resolve it. You multiply with the denominator t squared plus one over t squared plus one, root of that. Then this one here will give us root of t squared plus one over t squared plus one. That's what we have here. So we are doing this to remove the root on as your denominator, okay? You must always remember that. You can't have a root on your denominator. Now, what about sine 70? Sine 70, we know that is opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite, this one is finished. Opposite over hypotenuse. What is opposite over hypotenuse times 70? Opposite is one over root t squared plus one, okay? Now, in this case here, we know this already that sine 70 and cos 20, they are equal. So it's just gonna be giving us the same answer. Now, what about E? 340, turn 340, where is 340, guys? 340 is in the fourth quadrant. How do you get 340? How do you get the acute angle? 3 is minus 340, we get 20. So it means that also cos three, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. Turn 340 is equals to negative because it's in the second, negative turn 20, which is gonna be negative T because it's in the fourth quadrant, guys, okay? Now, let's move on to another question. I hope you guys are understanding this. Now, let's move on to another question here. Now, that's where you're supposed to use your, your, your reduction formulas now. Now, what is sine 90 plus x? Sine 90 plus x, we know that it is negative, it is uh, it is cos x. It is cos x. Plus, what is our cos 180 plus x? We know that 
Suppose 180 plus x is in the third, is in the third is in the second quadrant. So what should, what is the answer there? It give us we know this. We have done it here. 180 plus x. 180 plus x is in the third quadrant now. And in the third quadrant, what is sign? What is cos? Cos is negative. So what do we do? We're gonna say it's gonna be minus cos x. We put this in the bracket because then want to disturb these signs. Now plus what is cos 180? Cos 180 is negative one. Cos 180 is negative one. So negative one. Then what about 225? What is two, where is 225 here? 225. We are going to say 225 minus 180 is in the third quadrant is equal to 45. Now cos 40 tan 45 is equals to one. So you're just going to write one here. one oh before we go here this one uh no it's fine then here you're gonna get what you're gonna get a uh, turn 45 it's fine i'm just gonna put one here turn 45 so that we understand plus cos squared 180 minus x 180 minus x is in the third, second quadrant but this cos is negative so what do we know we're gonna put negative cos x but remember, this one is negative. So you must always remember that when we say cos squared x is the same as in a bracket cos x squared. Okay, that's what you must know. So it means we're gonna put it in a bracket and squared. Okay. Then what do we have here? We're gonna say cos x minus cos x. So it's gonna be cos x minus cos x plus this one is gonna give us negative one times one, negative one times one, we get here, then we get plus cos squared x, because negative is gonna cancel there. Then this one, these two are canceling, and here we're going to get minus one plus cos squared x. So that's what is our answer there, minus one plus cos squared x, that's what we get there. Okay, you can express this if you want, but this is the, the, the final one. You can express this if you want to, to expand it. You can still expand, like, uh, but there's no need for you. You can say this one is going to give us negative sine squared theta from the formula of sine squared theta plus cos identity, sorry, theta is going to give us one. So if you say one, if we are taking cos sine that side, it's going to be negative. We bring one that is going to be negative. That's what we are having here. Okay, so that's our, our final answer there. Now let's come here and see. This is actually a typical exam question. Now, then here we're told that sine 90 minus x, sine 90 minus x, what we know is equals to cos x. That's what we know is equals to coco root cos x. What about cos 180? minus uh, 180 plus x, 180 plus x, we know that is negative cos x, negative cos x, because in the second quadrant, in the third quadrant, sorry, then plus, what is our tan? Tan is sine x over cos x. What about our cos? We multiply with cos x, then more like over one here, then we multiply again here, sine, x minus theta minus 180 this is negative because sine is negative in the third in the second quadrant is positive in the second quadrant so if we say x minus 180 we are going to get a negative so you say, say it's more like 30 minus 150 1 minus 180 we get negative 150 and we are going to get negative sine uh, x here we're going to get negative sine x here okay then what do we do now we're going to get here we're going to get negative cos squared x, then what do we get here? This is gonna cancel. We're going to get a plus. What do we have here? We're gonna get negative. We're gonna get sine x, negative sine x, and sine x is gonna give us sine squared x, negative sine squared x. That's what we have there. So what we basically have here is minus cos squared x minus sine squared x. Then we factor out negative one, negative one outside cos squared x plus sine squared x. Now in this case now we are having identity that we have identity, identity that cos squared x plus sine squared is going to give us one, then it's going to give us a negative one, one which is going to give us negative one as our answer. 
Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, this lecture and uh, you understand you're going to use your induction formulas to get to the answer. Okay, don't hesitate to uh, to ask questions if you don't understand anyway. Okay, thank you so much. Until next time.